Right, for the benefit of the tape, DCF Meadows has entered the room. Now, it's quite simple, Mike. You waived your right to a solicitor, so if you're that confident that you didn't abduct Dean, where were you at 9.30? On my own, in the flat. I didn't see or speak to anyone, so I can't give you an alibi, but I've got nothing to do with it. What were you doing at the shopping centre? Because we've got you on CCTV looking at everything that's happening just after 11.15 this morning. No comment. I've shown the suspect exhibit ST2. Oh, you're quite a fan of Higgs, aren't you? No comment. I've been doing some checking, and there are quite a few similarities between you and Hegg. He was very close to his mother. She died when he was ten, and he was brought up by his father. Did you know that? No comment. Your mother died when you were twelve, and you were brought up by your father. Not the happiest of times, though, was it? I'm not saying anything till I've consulted a solicitor. Interview terminated, 14.46. We terminate the last interview, we were talking about your father. Is this meant to be about Dean Clark? My dad's got nothing to do with it. It's all right, Mike. I'm trying to help you here. Because I think I understand why you have this empathy with Hague. Yeah, can't get caught about my father, can he? He feels trapped. They just need to build the pressure. But he couldn't accept the fact it was his own fault for being a loser. So he took it out on his son. I think it was the same for you and your father, wasn't it? He blamed you for all his failures. It's all right. I'm not going to shout at you or try and twist your words or anything. Because I know that you were a victim too, aren't you? You're right. Dad knocked me around. There's a humiliation out there. That's the thing that hurts most. All those years of him saying that you're useless and you'll never amount to anything. And I suppose as you grow up, it begins to dawn on you what's been going on. And you want to get even, like Haig. To show everyone how it feels. With all those times you were being beaten, the whole world stood by and did nothing. But if you've taken Dean, why be quiet about it? I mean, Haig would have shouted it from the rooftops. He'd have wanted the whole world to know. You're saying that you killed Dean Clark? You won't ever find his body either. Now that's it. I want to speak to my solicitor in private. So where did you take Dean in the van? Somewhere you'll never find him. He wouldn't shut up. I had to knock him around a bit. Did you abuse Dean? Let's just say I had some fun before I finished him off. So where is he now? Did you take Wayne and Andrew to the same place? I... No, I, I never touched Wayne or his mate. Well, we know about the video games, the cash and the autographs that you gave them. So what happened when you met them in the park? I never even bothered turning up. But they went there and waited for you. It's too risky. Their mums had seen me talking to them. That's why I took Dean. Because he's a complete stranger. When did you actually kill Dean? Must have been about 11 o'clock. Before I went back to the shopping centre. Because about an hour ago, when you were talking to your solicitor, Dean Clark rang his mother at home. You're lying. He can't have done. The reason that you make yourself look like Alistair Haig is because you're a wannabe. Isn't that right? You wanted to abuse Andrew and Wayne and snatch Dean. But you couldn't face the idea of going inside and being picked on as a nonce, could you? It's all those years of your dad telling you how useless you were. <laughs> you were scared you wouldn't get away with it, isn't that right? Like I said, I never touched the two boys. Or Dean. Well, if you think you're walking out of here, sunshine, you got another thing coming. You're going to be charged with sexual grooming, wasting police time. Interview terminated, 1712.